Hello and welcome to the show. Regular viewers of my videos will know I am a massive fan of American muscle cars. I love the simplicity, the brutality almost, of the engineering that went into these. They are all about getting as much power in a car as possible, make it as fast as you could in a straight line for as little money as possible and damn the consequences of that. And there are stacks of fantastic, fantastic cars at the height of the power wars, if you like. The high-end vehicles were producing 360 plus horsepower. The Chevelles uh, were up to 450. There was even a Ford Galaxy that could get 600 horsepower. Now, okay, by today's standards, 350 horsepower, 400 horsepower isn't crazy talk, but we're talking about cars here from the 1960s. These were considerably more powerful than a lot of the Ferraris and Lamborghinis of the era. Of course, all of this power, all of this straight line speed did come at a bit of a cost. Well, as I say at a cost. Uh, the rest of the car was not exactly, well, sophisticated. The brakes were there, but didn't do much to slow the cars down. They were often very large and very heavy, which didn't exactly make them the greatest handling of vehicles. Now, you can get these cars around tracks with a fair amount of speed, do not get me wrong, but you have to give them an awful lot of respect. So you can see the way that this machine is uh, dealing with the corners, how much it does bounce and wobble its way around the turns. Although, again, we're in cars from the 60s. There wasn't exactly the hugest amount of technology available at the time. So again, even the Lamborghinis and Ferraris of the era would still bounce and move around a bit more than you might expect. When it comes to modern muscle cars, though, things are a little bit different. Although apparently Dodge didn't get that memo because, well, the demon is kind of still very much along the traditional lines, really. Many, many horsepowers in this one make it as fast as possible in a straight line, and the rest of it is kind of not too worried about, basically. Now, the Demon, in reality, if you run it on full-on race fuel, is supposed to get over a thousand horsepower. The version that we have in Forza is not being run on race fuel, I guess would be a road spec if you like, and that means it has a mere 840. 840 horsepower in a road car, and in a road car that is not really that expensive. And that level of power, okay, is not quite up there with the real high-end coincergs and the hypercars of this world, but it's not exactly that far away from many million-dollar hypercars. It's silly, silly, silly levels of power. 770 torque as well, although it's not exactly light at 4,200 pounds. Now, interestingly, the demon that we have in Forza comes stock on drag tyres, which I have taken off because it will chew through them in about two laps of any circuit and will be a completely and utterly unfair comparison with any other vehicles, seeing as it well wouldn't be road legal running drag tyres. Even with putting the car on normal road-going tyres, the same tyres that we will have on the other muscle cars here today, the benchmark reckons the Demon will do 0-60 in 2.8 seconds. That's seriously fast, although I'm not sure I believe that. That is 2.8 seconds, assuming that you can actually use said power, because said power wants to, well, just spin, and spin, and spin, and spin, and it, it, it kind of, yeah, wastes a lot. A lot of that power, so apparently it is 2.8 seconds. I'm, I'm not entirely, entirely convinced. Uh, the rival from Chevrolet, we have got the Camaro ZL1. This is considerably less powerful than the Demon. It has 650 horsepower. That is still, let's not forget, an awful, awful lot of power. 650 torque to go with that as well. It is lighter than the Dodge at 3,800 pounds. Not exactly what you would call a lightweight vehicle, but yeah, it's 400 pounds less than the Demon. In terms of its acceleration, 0 to 60, 3.7 seconds. Allegedly a second slower to 60 than the Dodge, but the difference is the Chevrolet can actually use its power. For having 650 horsepower, this ZL1 is a very, very tame car, almost, to drive. I drive all of my vehicles with no assists on Forza. There's no traction control and so on getting in the way. And 
I have no problem getting to full throttle around it. This is a, a tight street circuit. Long Beach is a tight technical uh, street circuit in places, and there is very little issue in getting to full throttle with the uh, Camaro here. At Daytona, a much more open circuit, spinning the wheels almost constantly with the Demon if you go near the throttle. The Camaro can deal with its power. I might have locked the brakes up a little bit into turn one. Get away with all of it, though. And little mistakes that you might do with the Camaro, the car is forgiving enough. It has the grip to be forgiving enough for you to, well, kind of survive them. You do silly things like that in the Demon, and you're going to have a very, very big accident. It would not be anywhere near as composed driving the Demon around <laughs> Long Beach as the uh, Camaro is. The ZL1 is a yeah, very, very nice car to drive. I'm not sure I'm completely sold on the looks of the Camaro. Well, it still looks very much like a muscle car. It doesn't look drastically different from, well, earlier generations of uh, Camaro. I don't like the new front bumper. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't look... It looks a bit squished. It looks a little bit weirdly proportioned. Much prefer the older looks to the uh, to the Camaros. But aside from that, trying to find faults with this car is rather difficult. Rather difficult indeed. But there is, of course, a third rival. This one from Ford, the Shelby GT350R. It is the least powerful of the cars here at a mere 526 horsepower. It has only 430 torque. Comparatively comparatively weedy in the engine department. It is, though, the lightest here. 3,600 pounds, a couple of hundred pounds lighter than the Camaro. Still not exactly an ultra-lightweight track car. Now, I have driven the Shelby, well, it was in previous Forza games on Forza 6, and I love the way that this, this vehicle drives. It is incredibly grippy through these turns. You can really throw the GT350R around a circuit and it just wants to grip. It wants to carry as much corner speed as possible. It doesn't want to be doing any silly, pointless wheel spinning stuff. It doesn't want to be going sideways around the corners. Now, the Camaro doesn't particularly, but it can still do it, whereas the Shelby is pretty much glued to the road. Now, there is no big, crazy splitters at the front and humongous rear wings. While there is a slight splitter, a slight rear wing, it's not exactly what you would say, a uh, you know, huge track stuff on this vehicle, but it has got the grip. It will carry phenomenal speeds through these corners. Of course, the downside, well, being the less powerful, least powerful car here, it is the slowest in a straight line. 0-63.9 seconds from the Shelby. We're doing 108.6 compared to a 7.9 from the Camaro and a 6.7, apparently, from the Demon. Top speed-wise, it is, again, the slowest of the three. Only 173 miles an hour from the Shelby compared to 208 from the Demon. The Camaro will top 200 as well. It's a 201.9. So, straight line speed-wise, the Shelby is going to be annihilated by the other two. However, around a circuit, the Shelby has got an awful lot of grip. So, naturally, we were going to have to go racing with the uh, field. We did have, unfortunately, one of the Shelbys at the front of the grid got screwed over by Forza not uh, releasing the car at the start of the race. Amazingly, we all managed to just about avoid <laughs> said Shelby. Bit of a bit of a mess, good old Forza 7 with its glitchy race starts in multiplayer. Either way, we made it just about through turn one. One of the Camaro's got a little bit of a tag and got turned sideways through a uh, rather scary, uh, rather scary corner as we all come up the hill. And this is where you can see the strengths of the uh, Shelby and then the strengths of the Demon. I can carry so much more speed up over the hill there compared to that Dodge. And again, around the next corner, carry so much more speed, get on the power so much sooner than the Dodge. Now, the Demon will have me down the short straight, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough to fend off the Mustang. I can dive a lot, lot later under brakes. And even running a little bit wide there, the Demon just doesn't have the grip to be able to make a cutback work. Now, the grid was, of course, set to random. There was a Demon up towards the uh, front who was coming under increasing pressure. You can see how much the Dodge is moving around through these fast corners in comparison to the uh, Camaro and the Shelby that he is racing. The Camaro has a big dive, struggles to get the car slow down into the hairpin. They both end up running a bit wide as the rest of the field is uh, filtering their way through that hairpin. The Demon is going to get mugged by both cars. It just is not capable of carrying enough corner speed. And when we do get onto the straights, sure, the Demon will be quicker, but it's not 
that much quicker. Again, you can see how much ground it loses uh, by the time we get to the turns. The Camaro, uh, in fact, the Ford ends up across the grass as the, the two of them are sort of fighting for position. The Demon can close back in again, but he's not going to be able to use. The Shelby can get that power down over the crest of the hill. The Demon's sort of sat there bobbling and, and wiggling around, and it's just not able to make the most of its uh, any of its straight line speed advantage and this would very much be the story of the Sonoma races the demons would gradually fall down through the field they just couldn't fight with the rest of the cars again another group demon trying to fend off from a Shelby and a Camaro around that very quick corner the demon always looking sketchy at those particular turns the shelby's up the inside into the final corner can park the car on the uh, apex the camaro will get up the inside on the exit and again the camaro is able to use its power out of that hairpin far far better than the demon can so even with that demon's acceleration it's not quite able to find a way to fight back because it's wasting all of its power it was a 1-2 for the Camaros early on in this race, with second place managing to hold up our little train of Fords. Now, this was helping the leader no end, not really helping the cause of the Mustang. As you see, the yellow Camaro slide his way through shot. We were keen to try and uh, find ways past the Camaro, again, taking a very, very defensive line through that uh, penultimate corner, but in the end, it's just not quite enough. It's a big dive from the Shelby Camaro, tries to cut back, manages to misjudge it, grazes the tyre bundle, and that's all the invitation that uh, I need to uh, throw my car up the inside. I'll get that position Camaro trying to uh, fend off. Now, that Chevrolet will be faster in a straight line. As I've said, the Camaro is very, very quick and very good at using all of its power. However, when it comes to uh, fighting with the Mustangs through the corners, the Ford is going to be the quicker but it is very close it is very close over the course of the lap these two even each other out they cancel each other out with the various strengths and weaknesses uh, pretty damn well indeed the demons were continuing to uh, struggle a little bit uh, even we had three of our very fastest drivers were running in the demons so it's not even a uh, complete driver skill they just couldn't compete we just couldn't compete with the rest of the cars. There's a Shelby to the inside, and while the Demon is going to fight fight that battle as long as he can, the Ford will once again get out of the corner first, and then we're into this next tight, this next, well, I say tight, it's kind of a flowingy, twisty section. High-speed corners are not going to be particularly kind to the Dodges. At the front of the field, having got free of the white Camaro, a kind of group of Mustangs would run near identical lap times to the leader, and then we'd start fighting each other. The leader was a little bit too far gone early on, and as soon as we started fighting each other, that was kind of a um, game over for any chance we had of catching the... <laughs> Catching the leader as, yeah, you lose so much time in battles like these. Excellent fun. Excellent fun indeed. And I, to be fair, I don't think that we could have chased down the Camaro because our lap times were so similar. We would only have been making at best a couple of tenths a lap unless the Camaro made any big mistakes. That The gap he had from, from the early stages of the race was a little bit too much. So we sort of settled in for a giant tussle over second place which didn't really help our our cause particularly me having to try and find a long way round but gonna run out of space over there and in the course of half a lap we was now quickly becoming a three car battle over that uh, second place Sonoma not the easiest of circuits to overtake around whatsoever with a lot of these fast flowing corners you are uh, not going to be able to really get passes done here you want decent sized braking zones and a lot of these certainly in the Shelby is just a small tap on the brake. The final hairpin is going to be your best bet. For me in the middle of this group I'm having to be very careful. I want to go aggressive to try and uh, get past second place. I go too aggressive though I'm going to lose a position so he's kind of finally judged. We're all compromising one another at uh, this particular point. The highest placed of the demons was in eight and gradually falling back from the vehicles ahead. As I said, they just simply didn't have the lap speed. They couldn't make the most of their power when it came to the corners. They were 
a real handful. Now, further back, there was a demon trying to fend off a couple of uh, cars, but it was very much a uh, fending off sort of a mission. A brilliant overtake from the uh, white demon there with a uh, purple car a little bit caught on the inside. Sort of bounces his way across the curb, loses momentum, has to have a lift. And it's, uh, as I said, Sonoma is a difficult place to get a pass, pass done, so especially to go around the outside when <laughs> in demons, that is a uh, very, very good overtake. The purple car has a look up the inside, but is not quite going to get the drive off of the turn to be able to make that pass stick while the demon further back was uh, <laughs> arguing with a couple of the Shelbys. There was plenty of good racing throughout the field at the front. As I said, it was a relatively easy in the end time for the Camaro, having got to the lead early on, was able to uh, make a gap, and while lap time-wise there was a tenth of a second in between the fastest lap. In fact, between the top four of us, I think there was only about two tenths of difference, with the Shelbys just fractionally nicking it from the Camaro, but incredibly, incredibly similar lap times. Us Fords were just too far back to do anything about catching the Camaro and then we started fighting one another as well which didn't help that cause it would be Camaros in uh fifth and sixth with a Shelby in seventh and as I said highest place demon ending up in eighth now Sonoma is a always likes to be a circuit the demons aren't gonna like it is a you know a lot of medium speed corners no real straights so to speak of so what happens if we were to take the race to a different circuit a place like indianapolis while this has still got some technical sections for the cars to worry about there are also considerably more straights for the much more powerful demons to enjoy the opening to this race actually got spread out quite uh, quite Quite early on. The Camaros certainly showed their initial launches. Like the 0 to 60 times of these cars is kind of slightly irrelevant with the Demons struggling to get traction. The Camaros very, very quick off the line and quick accelerating cars, although easy to get into trouble when you ask that little bit too much of them. We saw a few cars go uh, skating off at that particular turn. It's a really difficult turn to uh, judge the braking on sometimes. The Camaro we're following would uh, lose a few positions. At the front, it would be the Camaros that uh, may made an early breakaway once again having a bit nicer grid spots i don't think we had any shelbys towards the front of this race <laughs> whatsoever which uh, yeah made life difficult for the uh, poor fords as the uh, yellow camaro would find a way past the red car getting a little bit too much oversteer on the exit you can already see they were pulling a pretty big gap to the uh, the rest of the field there were a couple of mistakes uh, further back me included managed to bin it in a wall at uh, one point uh, just yeah, making make mistakes around this uh, this circuit. One of the Camaros with a wheel on the grass ended up out wide. As I said, yeah, I missed a breaking point somewhere, and I toured the um, I, I toured the track. I went exploring, which meant I had a fair amount of work to be doing with uh, my particular Shelby. I was locked in a battle with a Camaro and a Demon. I was so far up behind the back of the Camaro, I couldn't actually see where the course went. So I realised I jumped the chicane to let off the throttle, and that would plummet me to the back of this group. Uh, I mean, even if. Even if I hadn't, the demons were always going to get me down the straight, but I can carry that more speed. Even at a circuit like this, where it really doesn't particularly suit the Shelby, as soon as you get into any any sort of corner, I can carry so much more speed than the dodges. I get past two well, it's all on the exit of one turn. Said demons then manage to get connected and bump each other off the circuit, which doesn't really help their particular particular cause. It was kind of front of one car caught on rear of another. They end up waiting up and uh, drop back. I spotted opportunity to sneak up the inside of the Camaro with that better grip. But I can't quite get said pass done. Again, I can kind of irritate the back of the Camaro, but getting a pass complete is a bit more difficult around here. Because unlike at Sonoma, yeah, I've closed up. I was there. I get a good run, actually, onto this start. Finish straight. I'm right alongside, but then we've got a longish straight. And down said longish straight, off goes the Camaro. I can sit in the slipstream all I like, but that Chevrolet has got such a huge amount of straight line speed that I'm going to be well out of range by the time it comes to the breaking point and would have to wait again before I could try anything. Although well, they said Camaro does run a little bit wide through this first corner, and that would put me straight back onto the bumper. But yeah, it wasn't an easy time for the Fords to uh, make overtake stick around this circuit. Yeah, the uh, the Shelbys were struggling a little bit more here, but uh, they certainly weren't completely out of the fight. They weren't huge amounts of time a lap down on the cars around. They could put up a fight. It was very difficult, though, 
being constantly outdragged by everything because the Camaros would get into range to have a try at getting a pass done at just about the Chevrolet managing to get the vehicle stopped and the Ford could only really make its lap time best when it was running around completely on its own. When it had other cars to fight with, it was a lot more difficult to make your time through the turns because you had to kind of negotiate the other cars around you that were going to be to be slower. So yeah, running in traffic, the Fords weren't particularly great. Once they did get into free air, they could run very, very fast, but that was, yeah, <laughs> not always the case. Not always the case. So again, you can see how much the Shelby will close up through this uh, final twisty section. It can get right alongside the Demon, and there's two other Shelbys as well coming into this group, although we're on to that long straight again. The Shelbys are right there trying to mug the uh, Grey Demon, they both get good runs. They get better runs onto the straights than the Dodge, and then goes the power of the Demon. That'll go running off into the distance, and once again, these guys will find that they are too far back. And now, <laughs> now once more, Shelby's not helping each other as they start to fight for position, although relatively, uh, relatively clean, relatively uh, lack of time lost in that particular overtake for the Fords. Back towards the front of the race. It was a very, very big, brave move from the Demon in third. Uh, slightly bitchy, tired, don't ask, I don't know. Uh, it was a big, big, brave dive from the Demon to try and find a way past the uh, second place Camaro. The Dodges, as you would expect, were happier at this circuit with there being less of the flowing medium speed corners and more of us more stop start and more straights to really make the use of the power in the end the Camaro tried his very best to fend off said dodge but the demon would uh, eventually pressure him into a mistake and I have to say the brakes on the demon for what is the heaviest car here or what you would expect to be the worst in terms of the brakes the demon was not bad at all slowing down it was uh, yeah very very impressive uh, how good the demon was under brakes. So kind of going for a big dive on, on a demon was not a good idea because they really did get slowed down very quickly indeed. At the front, though, it would be once more a victory for the Camaros. They couldn't quite make it a 1-2 here, but it would be two Camaros on the podium. Again, the uh, leader managing to have a fairly sizable gap back to second place, being that uh, demon. Camaros in... Third, the battle for fourth would rage on for uh, the remainder of the race. Two demons fighting over that position, but had a couple of Shelbys for company as well. And as soon as the demons started fighting, that's always going to invite the Shelbys into the fray. The Ford going around the outside of the green demon. That's a huge amount of speed to be able to get that pass done. A huge amount of extra speed through the turn to be able to get that pass done and the demons having to try and now fight off another one of the uh, shelby's the gray demon has got a little bit of uh, leeway but it's all immediately eradicated into the next corner the shelby looking for any which way he might be able to uh, get past while further back the gray demon is uh, desperately trying to fend off the hordes of shelby's as we round the final corner onto the start finish straight once more the mustang gets a fantastic run but then runs out of speed to do anything about the demon the demon will get fourth highest place the mustang's fifth uh, another mustang in sixth demon seventh with a further shelby in eighth now, okay, it's to kind of be expected that the Demon would struggle when it came to the circuit racing and the Shelby would be good at the twisty stuff and the Camaro would be good overall. But what about a drag race? Because, of course, this is where you would expect the Demon to excel with all of that power being built, uh, you know, as a car for drag racing. So we lined up three Camaros, two Shelbys and three Demons in this one. This is where things get interesting. You see, the problem with the Demons is once again that launch. They cannot make the most of their power, while the Camaros can. As we run down the drag strip, yeah, once the Demon's got going, the Demon will very, very quickly, I say very quickly, will start reeling in the Camaro, but it isn't as quick as any of us expected. Now, we were expecting the Camaros and the Fords to be good off the line, but thought the Demon would come flying past it doesn't. It runs out of time. Now, this is the kind of best drag strip that we can use here with the way that the replays work on Forza. And the Demon can't catch the Camaro. In fact, the three Camaros uh, beat out the second two of the Demons. Uh, the Fords down towards the back, as you would expect the Ford being the least powerful car. We did another drag race just to see 
to see if we, how the consistency of the results would go, if you like. This time, the three Camaros get a much, much e more even start. Now, the driver of the White Demon reckons he might have jumped for the start by kind of a tenth of a second in this one. Um, either that or he just got a mega, mega launch compared to the rest of them. The Purple Demon is once again catching but runs out of time to do anything about the three Camaros, while the Green Demon still struggled to get that launch right and the Shelbys were down towards the back. So, yeah, the White Demon possibly might have had a little bit of a jump start or just a complete mega launch. Then the three Camaros beat out the second of the Demons. The problem with the Demon is it's just too inconsistent trying to get that car off the line. Sure, you put the Demon on drag tyres, it will beat the competition, but then I, if we're putting the Demon on drag tyres, everyone should be on drag tyres, and then you get exactly the same results. We weren't expecting that. We were not expecting that. So far, the rest of it had gone according to sort of the, the, the playbook, but the Camaro, over what is just over half a mile drag race, would go better. Our next test of 0 to 100 to 0. Uh, a good test for the vehicles. It tests traction, acceleration, as well as braking. Somehow the green and orange Camaro managed to swap sides. I mean, <laughs> well done, guys. I think the orange got a bit, a bit too much wheel spin off of the line and managed to twist himself. Would have helped with his uh, stopping distance. The red Camaro uh, doesn't have a particularly great run because, of course, again, you know, this comes down to getting every shift perfect, getting it perfect, uh, you know, stopping from that 100 miles an hour, getting a good launch and whatnot. The Fords get slowed down from 100 very, very quickly. However, they don't get up to the 100 mile an hour quite as fast as the Camaros, which means that the Camaros would beat the Shelby. Again, we are perhaps expecting these sort of results. And then we have more weirdness to throw into the mix. The Demons, that had really struggled to get off the line, somehow managed to get stopped quicker than the Camaros. This we weren't sure about, because the Camaros were proving to be faster to 100 than the Demons. However, the Demons consistently, I mean... The Demons had a very, very close consistency with their, their three cars that were going. Better than the Camaros, which, you know, says to me the brakes in that Demon are really, really something spectacular to have done that. I had a four minute of filming kind of his camera car for the end of the drag race and was curious to see how that would do. And, uh, well, it takes a while to get to 100. Once it does get to 100, it gets stopped really quickly, but you can't quite compete with the uh, selection of muscle cars. So... The Demon would win the 0 to 100 to 0 test that we really wouldn't expect it to, and then loses the drag race most of the time to the Camaro. Strange. <laughs> it's really, really quite strange. One of the Camaros does just... The, the, the best of the Camaros does just beat the worst of the Demons, because, of course, a lot of the Demons comes down to just how well you get that car away from the line. I was surprised to see the spread of the Camaros. It was to be just a poor launch from the red car. The Shelby's very, very close to uh, gather in the end. The Shelbys can't quite beat even the uh, poorest of the Camaros, though. I, I had kind of personally hoped that the Shelbys, the, the excellent brakes on that Ford, might have been enough to uh, see it get ahead of the Camaro, but it's just a little too slow accelerating. Eh, perhaps not so surprising, considering how far it is down in terms of power, because the Camaro uses its power so well that the Shelby uses its power well also, but Camaro really does make the most of what it what it has, and then my Formula E car is a little bit further down the road. Uh, considering I think I got to about 100 miles an hour as I got to the back of the uh, Demons, the way, <laughs> way that gets slowed down, pretty, uh, pretty bloody good going. So, the next test, we were off to our Yas Marina test track with all three of the cars to see which would go fastest around this circuit. Now, this particular test track that I am using is not going to be fun for the Demon. No, not going to be fun for the Demon whatsoever because it is a technical circuit. There is a long straight, but there's only really one and there's a couple of very fast corners that the Demon is not going to like should potentially favour the Shelby a little bit uh, a little bit more. It closer resembles Sonoma, perhaps, than Indianapolis. And sure enough, between the Shelby and the Camaro, it is very, very close. As soon as we get to a corner, the Shelby closes up. As soon as we get to an acceleration zone, the Camaro pulls away. And this would go on for the entirety of the lap. Every corner, the gap would change and fluctuate between the Shelby and the Camaro, but it would remain very close indeed. And the demon would continue to fall back. As we head up towards this final corner, it is 
absolutely neck and neck between the Ford and that Chevrolet. The Ford getting in and getting out of that final turn a little bit ahead of the Camaro, but then we have that uh, Chevrolet power down towards the finish line. It will always be gaining on that Ford very close between the Shelby and Camaro, not very close with the poor Demon. Yeah, the Dodge not having the greatest of times. It is insanely close between the Shelby and Camaro. However, the Shelby would beat it just two hundredths of a second. They both beat the BMW M4. They both beat the Ferrari California T. They're both also almost two seconds faster than the Dodge Demon. The Demon is setting a near identical time to the Lotus Evora S. I mean, yeah, around that circuit, that would be expected. If it had been in a longer circuit, I think the Camaro would beat the Shelby, a circuit with a considerably more straights. I think they both would have beaten the Porsche Cayman GT4 at a, at a longer circuit. In the end, around a track like that, the Cayman is very, very good around the turns. I mean, both those cars are only a second away from the Aston Martin GT12. That's some serious lap speed that both the Shelby and Camaro have got. That is incredible lap speed from the pair of them to be that close, to be beating the M4 GTS. So, as far as conclusions go, the Camaro ZL1 here has to be the victor of this, of this showdown. While, sure, on paper the Demon has some very impressive figures, when it comes to an actual drag racing test, it wastes so much of its time spinning all of its power away, it's just not usable. Yes, if you got an absolutely perfect launch with the Demon and a Camaro was a little tardy getting away or slightly missed a shift, maybe the Demon would win over the, call, you know, the distance of the drag race that we were doing. And sure, over a mile drag race, the Demon would be quicker. It was catching the Camaros towards the end, but it wasn't catching it as quickly as you would expect. Such a specific set of circumstances almost has to take place for the Demon to beat the Camaro that the Camaro was the more consistent car. I mean, the drag race we were doing was not a short drag race down there. That was not a sh particularly short race whatsoever, and the Demon wasn't really... or well, was, was catching, but couldn't beat the Camaros consistently. That was not the outcome that we were expecting whatsoever. The biggest surprise, though, admittedly, was the Demon's brakes. In that 0-200 to naught. we are still on the rather mystified side of all of that. In terms of the, the handling, the Shelby is the fractionally better car around really technical section, the tightest and twistiest parts of a circuit, the Shelby will be quicker. And if a circuit is made up of enough tight, twisty sections, then it will be the faster car over the course of a lap. But the majority of circuits, I think the Camaro will be a little bit faster. Simply because as soon as it gets out of a corner, the Camaro can use all of its power, it's got that bit more acceleration. And let's not forget, when it came to the drag races, it fairly convincingly beats the Shelby in the 0-100 to naught as well. It's uh, all three of the Camaros beat, got a little bit close with one of them, but they all convincingly beat those, those Shelby. So, yeah, overall, the Camaro will be the victor here. But if I was to have to pick one of these cars, I know the one that I would want. And that would still be the Shelby. The Dodge, I love. I love the Demon as a crazy, ludicrous power car for very, very little money. I am very glad that the Demon exists. It looks great on paper, the statistics and so on are very impressive, but a lot of the time it's not so much use when it actually, you know, it comes to putting it into practice. We saw it get beaten by Camaros regularly in straight line speed tests. I would have the Shelby simply because it is the car that I have the most fun driving. I know that over a fair few circuits, the Camaro will be quicker than it. I know the Camaro will beat it in a drag race, but I will have more fun driving the Shelby around circuits than I do in the Camaro. The Camaro is a very, very good driving car. The Shelby is, to me, that little bit better. It suits my driving style that little bit more. I think the Shelby is the better looking car of the three. They're all good looking cars, but I prefer the look of the, uh, the Shelby. So, yeah, put it all together, I would personally still have the Shelby. Even knowing that, technically speaking, that Camaro is the best car overall, knowing how well the Shelby tackles some of the corners, how well this car will drive, I would, would still have the Shelby. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>